Hey guys, uh, thanks for being patient with me. It's been almost four months I've been out. Uh, my last semester was really tough, so uh, it was really hard mixing schoolwork and uh, trying to make videos. But uh, I'm back, and uh, hopefully for the next month I will be able to uh, put in as many videos as I can. So today we're going to be talking about the more machine, and uh, the more machine is basically a machine in which the output is a function of the present state only. And I'm going to explain this definition to you using a diagram. Okay, so uh, let's imagine we have two D flip-flops. We'll call the first D flop uh, A and the second flip-flop B. And of course the subscript we use is uh, DA. And we have our A here as an output and our A prime here as an output. And for the second one we have DB and we have B here as an output and B prime here as an output also and of course we have our clocks and this is our input wires and our output wires let's say this output wires are connected to uh, exclusive OR gate and the output is Z so this is a more machine because the output which is Z is a function of the present state only. So this is totally different from a Mealy machine because in the Mealy machine the output is a result or a function of the present state and the input. So in the Mealy machine which like I said earlier that is going to be a function of the present state and the input it's going to be something like this. So this is the input. Remember I told you the B is the input, so let's put in the input wire and let's end it with this. So now you see that the new Z is a function of both the present state, I call it PS, and the input. So that is the Mealy machine. But today all we're going to be talking about is the more machine. So right now we're going to take a look at the more circuit timing diagram and how it looks like. And we have an input sequence of uh, x equals 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. And we have an initial state of a equals 0 and b equals 0. And it is a rising edge triggered machine. So first things first, we need the diagram. We need to know what the ma we need to know how the machine looks like. They said it's a more circuit, so we're gonna know that the output is a result of the present state only. Let's say we have two D flip flops again. It's the same thing as the example I used. We have D A, A, A prime, and remember those are your outputs, and we have D B. That's a flip flop, by the way. And we have A, I'm sorry, B. And we have B prime. B and A are connected to exclusive OR gate. Z is the output. And here we have an OR gate. We have X and we have A. So I can technically connect this right here. And here we have another exclusive OR gate. And of course, we can technically connect that to here when wiring. This is the circuit we're going to use. So now they say the input sequence is x equals 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. This is the x you're talking about, and this one also. And the initial state of A is going to be 0. And the initial state of B is equal to 0. So of course, B prime is going to be one in in that case in the timing diagram we are going to draw we need five different variables which is x your clock a b and z your x is going to be changing from zero one one zero one and if your x changes is going to affect your a's and your b's and of course a mixture of your A and B is going to affect your Z's. See, I didn't say a mixture of your X 
your A and your B is going to affect your, your Z because that is a melee machine and I'm going to talk about that in the next video. This is our timing diagram. So we put in our X, our clock, our A, our B, and our Z. Let's put our X value, our A value, and our B value into the timing diagram. So first and foremost, let's start with our clock. We have a uh, tick, talk, tick, talk, tick, talk, tick, talk, tick. Yeah, we can st stop there. And I also want to, you to remember in the question, they said that the clock trigger is in its rising edge. So what I usually do is just make things easier for me and like label all the rising edges so it'll be easy for me to uh, know what to do when I start inputting my A, B and Z. So the next thing we do is put in our X value and for the X value we have 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. So we'll put 0. It doesn't matter if the 0 exceeds the clock rising edge because it's only going to be triggered at this points which are the yellow lines so it doesn't really matter if you extend the X right here and then you go to 1 so we have X is 0 1 1 and then after this we have 0 and after this clock edge we have 1 remember our A is 0 starts with 0 and our B also starts with 0 so now we look at the diagram. Our X starts with zero. And usually before like the clock edge, nothing happens to Z. So your Z is also zero until it reaches the clock edge. So let's see what's going to happen when your X, A and B reaches the first clock edge triggered. Y your X starts with zero. Your B is zero. So that's uh, going to be one because that's B prime. Your A is zero and your X is zero. 0 or 0 will give you 0 and this is a D flip-flop so your B is going to be 0 and we have uh, 0 exclusive or with 1 if you look at your exclusive or table you see that uh, once you have 0 or 1 or 1 or 0 that's going to give you a 1 output so we have a 1 here another D flip-flop so it gives us a 1 here 1 exclusive or 0 is going to give you Z as 1 so now your Z is going to be 1 it's a normal thing for like this to happen after the clock uh, trigger, after the clock edge trigger, because we usually have a delay sequence when like for all these bits to uh, transfer the information to Z, there's usually a delay, but it's very uh, very little. But you still need to put it in the timing diagram in order for like your teacher or whoever is marking this to uh, understand what you're doing. So now your Z is one, and your B is still zero because as you can see here your B is zero and that is your next the next state of your B is going to be zero and the next state of your A is going to be one these values you got here and here are now going to come down here as your new B which you're going to make the inverse of it so if your B was zero here is going to be one again and if this was one your A, your new A is going to be one so now our new A is 1, our X is still 1, this is happening at this edge trigger, and our B prime, because our B is 0, our B prime is 1, and our X is still 1, 1 exclusive O with 1 will give you 0, and that is 0 here, and 1 or 1, or the inclusive O, it's going to give you 1. So 0 exclusive O with 1 is gonna, still going to give you 1. So here, on the Z output, we're going to have 1 until this clock trigger. And our B becomes 1, because you see it right here. We also need to give it a delay, a little bit of a delay. And our A becomes 0, as you can see right here. And like I said, this A value comes in as our present state now. And this B output becomes the present state at the third clock edge, which is that clock edge. Okay, so right now our, our A is 0, our B is 1, and 1 prime is 0. And at this clock edge, our 
x is still 1, so we have 1, 1. 1 exclusive old 0 is going to give you 1. We have 1 here and 1 here. 0 or 1 is going to give you 1. So we have 1 here and 1 here. So 1 exclusive old 1 is going to give you 0. So your z is now going to be 0. Give that delay until the next clock edge. And our b still going to be 1. And our a goes to 1. So now we have A as 1, B is 1, 1 prime 0, and our X in this clock edge is 0. So X 0 and X 0. So 1 or 0 is 1, 1. 0 exclusive or 0 is 0, 0. So 0 exclusive or 1 is going to give you 1. So, so in this case, your Z is going to be 1. Your B is going to also be 1 and your A is going to come down to zero. Don't forget that delay. Okay, so let's see what's going to happen at this clock edge. We have our A as zero, our B as one, one prime is zero, our X as one, zero all with one is going to give you one, one, 1 exclusive O with 0 is going to give you 1, 1. 1 exclusive O with 1 is going to give your Z as uh, 0. So your Z is going to come down to 0. Your new B is still going to be 1. And your A is going to shoot up as 1. And that, my friends, is how to decode the machine in order to understand how the diagram is going to come out like. So our Z is going to be... Uh, it's going to start with 0 because nothing happened at first. Then it's going to be 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. So that's the initial state. 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. That's what our Z is. And our A, the initial state was 0 also. So we have 0 here. We have 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and our B initial state is 0, and we have 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. So we have 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. Now X here remains uh, 0, 1, 0, no, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, and uh, this, my friends, is how the timing diagram for the more machine looks like. So the next thing we are going to do is the state graph. That is uh, That was one tricky thing for me when I was taking this, so uh, hopefully I'll make it as easy as possible for you guys to understand.